Hello and welcome back to the Games Embassy with the Ambassadors of Gaming. I'm one of your army of hosts, Ambassador Billy. I am Ambassador Michael. And I am Ambassador Kevin. And welcome to our corner of the internet where we have news about stuff. Mike and Kevin, how are you guys doing today? We're doing well. This is take two of the show. We had technical difficulties because that's what the show is. Kevin spilled his coffee. I'm so as mad. We, we discussed on the first run. So it's been, a, it's been an average day in the life of the ambassadors of gaming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's gone to shit in like 10 minutes. So, you know, the usual. I had to reset oh. my computer and it took like forever to update. And then I had a random update as well. Like, it's great. Yeah, yeah my, this is, you know. My internet, just, my internet decided to go for a walkie walk, you know. So it's average, average stuff. <laughs> Pretty much. It's... It's the expectations of this show. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Now we'll so, Mike with the plug. Yeah, because if you would if you would like to help us make this show less of a train wreck, you could do so uh, by engaging in some capitalism over on the Patreon page, where you can get some cool perks and goodies like early access to the shows, getting your comments, questions, and or concerns read on the show, and exclusive content. Sometimes you get more than one exclusive content per month, and that is only $1. $1. For extra Oops. content. Unbelievable. Anyways, you can get that at patreon.com slash investors of gaming. But that's about it. Awesome. Uh, so let's get into updates, announcements, and other news. Uh, Mike, why don't you take us away with that one? Sure. Fury developer The Game Bakers has announced their new game. It's called Haven. The studio has shared the first gameplay trailer and announced that Haven will launch in 2020 on PC, PS4, and Switch. No Xbox. Sad face. Done, done. <laughs> Phil Spencer, uh, he's just got to be salty about it. Oh, yeah. Uh, coincidentally, the next news item is uh, that Xbox Game Pass, uh, the update will include a play later feature. So a play later feature. My, uh, my language is just completely failing. Right <laughs> so okay. Xbox Game Pass it. update includes a play later feature. Got it in the end. There you okay. go. So Game Pass, both on console and the mobile app, now has a play later feature. Essentially, what this is going to let you do is track the games that you want to download and play instead of let, making you search through the whole app every time you want to download a game. So it kind of uh, keeps everything nice and organized and easy access uh, in the long term. So uh, like I think, um, uh, like you were saying, Mike, it's like quality of life, isn't it? Right. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice feature. It's a wish list kind of checklist kind of thing so you can keep track of what you want to play without having to search through every time which is kind of obnoxious so i think it's a <laughs> it's a solid ad psychonauts 2 is delayed the game is not released in 2020 the studio also further mentioned that they confirmed the game being published by microsoft as a first party title but still coming to other platforms even ps4 oh boy I, yeah, we discussed see. this in the first cut but uh yeah it, there's no way sony would let this happen <laughs> it, yeah, that was like, the other way it, if Double Farm was being like was bought by Sony, they would not release They would the lock it but, down. Yeah. They would just yeah, refund but, you. They'd be like, sorry, here's a refund yeah. for all of you that yeah, wanted on Xbox. Xbox is not in a position to do that to do that at all. It actually would be more of a negative for Xbox, so right. they cannot do that. So that would keep releasing as a multi platform yeah. game. Yep, yep. So this is what the third or fourth one they'll have released in like a year on PS4. Because they got my, they got Minecraft, this, and uh, Outer Worlds, right? Yeah, it so. makes you think. Is the next generation Xbox going to be the PS5? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> Especially with the the Game Pass. I think they also mentioned how they want the Game Pass to be almost almost every platform. Right. They've they've so. discussed their ambition to get it everywhere. So we'll just have to see. Uh, Amazon Game Studios is working on the Lord of the Ring MMO. So the game is being planned for PC and consoles. It will be free to play. And it, as discussed previously, it was announced last year by the AU and their studio, Athlon Games. However, at the time they had stated they were working with an unnamed partner developer. For those who don't know, the AU does own Warframe developer Digital Extremes. So there's hopes that the game won't be crap. Yeah, because Warframe is still being supported to this day, and that game came out on the PS4. Right, launch. that right. game genuinely it, surprised so. me. I was, I actually was, re I mean, because I'd never, I, I didn't know what to expect going into Warframe, but you know, the if if it's right. got that kind of DNA or so, or like a company like that behind it, then you know, like you said, it's a good sign. Well, a free a free to play game. The game has amazing quality right. and concept as well. Right, right. 
Okay. Sounds good. So, uh, the new Pokemon games continue to be full of surprises. The 2019 versions of Pokemon will feature version exclusive gyms. Uh, the fighting type leader Bea or Bea will be in Pokemon Sword, and the ghost type leader Alistair will be in Pokemon Shield. Uh, as far as I know, this is obviously this is the first time. I mean, Kevin, uh, are you aware of any previous Pokemon games having like version specific content? Or I think they'll probably have something where like um, the Elite Four, like the Pokemon League, might have like a different champion, but not really like a gym. So that's. It's actually pretty good. Like, oh, uh, like it's fine, you know. Like, gym is saying you just pass through. You don't really care for them. Yeah, you know it's mean? more so, the adventure around right. the gym, isn't it? So, yeah, but like the content behind that is whatever. But I'm so upset about the whole them not pouring Pokemon's over from like you know the previous games. Well, not all the Pokemon. So, right, but we'll discuss that later or some other show. Yeah, we've be- we've been that horse to to death like a million times. But yeah, it you know their argument is uh, not I'll, very solid. Right. I will continue to beat that horse, but it's not today. <laughs> I'm just already angry because my coffee is going slow. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Final Fantasy VII Remakes gets even more confusing. The German Xbox Twitter account posted a video stating the game will be released the same day as on the PS4. Hmm. This message seems especially egregious given the game has been repeatedly marketed as launching first on PS4. Massey Graf, or Draft, cut, I don't know. Microsoft Marketing and Communication and Social League confirmed the mistake saying, Sorry, no announcement on our side. Big apologies for this. Square Enix released its own statement regarding the incident saying, As previously announced, Final Fantasy VII Remake will be released for the PlayStation 4 on March 3rd, 2020. We have no plans for other platforms. What do you guys have to say about that? Because to be honest, I don't think an Xbox official Twitter account will make a mistake like that. I think it's going to come out for Xbox. But I don't think it will come on the same day. Yeah. That is crazy. But that just kind of shows that the game might be a time exclusive. Yeah, I think I think it's always been up in the air as a timed exclusive. I've had this discussion a lot with, with other people, including um, Adam. I, I think that they just... It, it doesn't make any sense for Square Enix to make this an exclusive to PS4. Yeah. It just doesn't. Yeah. Um, it, it doesn't, does it? Because, like... You know, like Square Enix just started releasing the other Final Fantasy game to like the Xbox and right. the Switch. And if you notice that like, most of the marketing, you'll never see Xbox, mostly Switch. Like, hey, Final Fantasy 9 is finally on Switch. And right. You will not even see Xbox. And at the end of the but, trailer, you'll see the Xbox logo. Right. Yeah, but also, um, it kind of makes sense for um, this game to be uh, like basically them to try like, you know, like sweep on a rug because. They want this game to push PS4 sales, you know? Like, yeah. Sony wants this game to be like, hey, this is something I'm getting a PS4 for this game or right. near PS5. So right. that kind of makes sense why they're trying to like, eliminate the Xbox brand, for, at least for now, and just making sure like it's focused on the PS4. And then when it actually does release on Xbox, they'll be like, okay, it's coming to Xbox soon. Right, pretty much. I think that'll, that'll more or less be kind of how it ends up. as like, a, oh, yeah, by the way, it's coming to Xbox at some point. Because, um, I, I don't know, it, it's such a a large production for them that it just, it doesn't seem to make sense to me why they wouldn't want to capitalize and make as much money as possible. Yeah. Especially when this game is like, I feel like it's like one of Square Enix uh, last saving grace because they have not been doing good so far. Yeah, it's you literally their own shit button. Yeah. Like, yeah. Break in case like, of emergency. Like, the city of NT, who's playing that game? You know, like, Final Fantasy 15, uh, 15 was a train wreck. Like, it's like, you, right. you love or you hate it, but there's more hate than love. Like, 13 was, like, as well bad, but 15 was, oh, my, like, you know, the I, people, like, the fans the at least are not happy. With I like 15, but I can still acknowledge the fact that it feels like a stitched together game. It feels like they took multiple games and put them together into one thing. So I just don't like a game like Final Fantasy to have the story, you know, being told through diff- way different platforms. Like you have to read a book, you have to watch a movie, you have to do all this stuff mm. for the story, and then the story itself it doesn't even. Make I mean, sense. it like, looked good. You don't really care My about the characters. God, it looked good, didn't it? It was yeah. a really nice yeah. looking game. Like I remember uh, when it got the uh, the PS4 Pro and X enhancement and oh Updates. my goodness, it yeah. just looks stunning. Like I I just I just wanted to play it again just for witnessing those visuals but um but yeah i kind of i kind of hear where, where kevin's coming from there it's like you know this is definitely kind of square enix uh way to kind of i mean th- this they need to hit all the marks with this final fantasy remake because this is going to win hopefully 
you know, theoretically or hopefully uh, win back a lot of good faith with uh, with fans and, and kind of uh, reinstill a lot of mm-hmm. a lot of maybe lost faith with people that were like, oh, you know, I don't really trust Square Enix to to do to do the right thing. So, um, hope for the best. You know, I really think that Square Enix should at least start going back to like the original like Final Fantasy games, how like you know, swords, magic. Kind of like fourteen, like fourteen have those yeah. things, you know, like right. not like all futuristic. You see how thirteen came out; it's futuristic game. They really do good, good at, with the fans, and it was like a how you, what was the phrase like a stairway or like you know how you just keep going forward. Like there was no path, there wasn't like open world. It's like just keep it was going, linear. follow the path. Yeah, very very linear. Yeah, but it's extremely linear. And then fifteen, it's not as linear, but like you know, when you're on the car, it's mostly linear. You know, like you literally just hold like one button right. and go forward, right? And all the stuff. And this game is also very futuristic. And like I don't know, but after playing Final Fantasy Nine recently, like again, mm-hmm. and I'm like, man, this game is a masterpiece. You know, like Square Enix needs to start going back to like the core, like what made Final Fantasy great. Yeah. You know, right? You and I discussed this in private earlier in the week, but. Uh, the game that came out the only other final fantasy game that came out after 15 so far has been world of final fantasy which is very very close to their roots in my opinion and then yeah. it's also got that riff of like pokemon like it's like their version of like the mon- you know the monster hunting kind of monster catching kind of genre yeah. and uh that thing is phenomenal but it didn't sell amazing like it sold well um but it didn't sell super amazing because of its chibi art style or whatever i guess um, but at its core, that game is very much what people expect from Final Fantasy, and that's what I tried to tell a lot of people who, who um, you know, Final Fantasy fans. I'm like, if you really want a, like a real Final Fantasy experience, go play World of Final Fantasy. It's really, really good. Um, it's really, really good. Yeah. Really, really good. And it was the last. Honestly, it was the last Square Enix game that I really enjoyed playing. Like I enjoyed Kingdom Hearts three to an extent, but. World of Final Fantasy is the last game I loved from Square Enix. I haven't liked any of the games they put out lately. They've just been miss after miss after miss. They had what? The Quiet Man, Kingdom Hearts 3, Final Fantasy 15, Just Cause. And that's pretty much it, right? Yeah, like Kingdom Hearts 3, like, you know, when I first beat the game, I actually was kind of like happy. Like, like I was happy. Like I was, and then like, for some reason, like, a day later, I just got extremely upset. Like, wait, this is it? Like, it was, it was a weird game for me. Like, I was happy I beat the game. Like, yes, it's like, you know, my 10 years of reading right. and all that stuff. And then I'm like, wait, this is it? Like, that's how they ended? Like, right. all this gameplay is so bad. Like, all this stuff, it's, it kind of hit me like a delay, like a delay effect of right. me start resenting the game. And now you see, like, I'm very, very against Game Wars <laughs> 3, which is kind of weird. Right. I guess, like, There's originally, strong. Yeah. yeah, like, originally, like, I, I was like, I don't want to say blindfolded, but like, you know, like I was just playing the game, like, okay, Kingdom Hearts 3, okay, like, I'm a Kingdom Hearts fan, I'm gonna love this game. And then eventually the blindfold came off, and I was yeah. like, what the hell I'm playing? Yeah. The rose colored glasses <laughs> wore off eventually for all of us, I think. Yeah, that happens. The same um, thing with like yeah. movies like Incredibles and stuff like that, Incredibles 2. Like, a lot of people are like, you wait so long for it, and it's like, is that it? Like, it could have been so much more, but. Right. Yeah, exactly. I think, I think that's actually a, a wonderful comparison. Um, and I'll hit on that, and unless you guys have anything to say, I'll, I will want to kind of get into the news. But uh, Incredibles 2 is a great uh, example because it was such a long-awaited sequel, and it did exactly what Kingdom Hearts 3 did. It it followed up as if it came out immediately after the original, um, or, or the last entry in it, and it hadn't. And so it felt good because it was exactly what you wanted it to be, but you had to wait too damn long to get it. Like, and, and you're yeah. just... You know, you're old, significantly older than who you. The I was a child when the Incredibles came out, the original one. So, oh, yeah. like, you know, I felt I I I could understand why people would feel that way, but I didn't have that expectation watching it. I guess, whereas I did with Kingdom Hearts three. Oh, I didn't even watch it. Like, I saw Kingdom Hearts three. You know, it's, uh, I like Incredibles still coming out. Oh, coming out great. You know, I don't have any kids, so I'm not saying it's a child movie, but no, I know. I lost interest. You know, like it, it's it's not one of my things. It's not like up to a Kingdom Hearts standard for me. You know, like oh, it's my childhood thing. I love it. Right. Like at this point, I don't even watch Disney movies anymore. That's fair. At least for me. Yeah. So yeah, but I think that was a great comparison to like, to to kind of. Give it, you know, in contrast to people who aren't Kingdom Hearts fans. But, Great comparisons um, are what I'm known for, dude. <laughs> Wonderful. 
Excuse me. So I want to move into the news because we have uh, some big stories this week that are, are going to eat up, I think, a good portion of the show, and they're going to be pretty pretty meaty in their discussion. So uh, the first one here is Man of Medan, the super massive game, is getting multiplayer, interestingly enough. The first game in Super Massive's The Dark Picture Anthology is receiving two multiplayer modes, a shared story more mode eh, that allows two players to play the game side by side and branch off to have different perspectives for the assigned characters. This mode is not cross-platform, so you can only play it with you know, PS4 or Xbox. Playing this mode will reduce the time of the game due to players missing out on certain scenes, reducing the game's overall playtime from roughly four to five hours to three and a half hours. Movie Night Mode will allow multiple people to play the game locally. Players assign themselves a character or multiple characters if there are less than five people and take turns playing the game. The game will actually tell you whose turn it is based off of the character they select. The game will also give out awards at the end of each chapter for certain actions. So, you know, if you got somebody killed, you had the quickest QTE, something like that. Anyways, um, I think this is interesting in particular because Supermassive is... And don't not are the only people who really capitalize on that Telltale formula anymore. Yeah, and Telltale's gone now. Sad and face. Until Dawn, I think, uh, in my opinion, surpassed pretty much every Telltale game I ever played. Yeah. In terms of make quality enjoyment, it it it's still very very good. I I thought about going back and playing it, but Man of Medan is so close. I'm just gonna wait to get that. Um, also, the the butterfly effect has, and until Dawn. Your decision actually matters right. compared to majority of Telltale games where you feel like, yeah, you, you have to make a choice, but at the end, they all leads to like almost the same result, so it doesn't really matter. Right, they funnel you pretty hard in Telltale, whereas Until Dawn... Oh, that was excellent. Can never I sh- really like the butterfly effect situation in, 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 in Until right. Dawn. It, it was really well done. Like, I, I know like um, Daryl, for example, they, we, me and Daryl were talking about this the other day. We were like, uh, he, was, he was encouraging me to play Until Dawn. I played like... Uh, a fair chunk like into the game and um Mm -hmm. i really liked how i the game was taking me on the journey like it wasn't like me guiding the game like through the pre-created routes and whatnot even though obviously from a technical standpoint there are always kind of predestined routes and all these other stuff but um you know i just felt really nice and and uh and you wanted to find out what happened next as a result of your actions, especially like when you knew the butterfly effect was kind of, kind of going to have an have an impact on it. Right. There's um. If if you, I I don't want to spoil. You haven't beaten it, correct? No, no, no. Okay, I don't want to spoil it. So, but where I was going to go with that is that the the butterfly effect specifically in that game, you can get everybody killed within the first like hour of the game and just be done, and then you're yeah. done. Like, and just be done Credits. with it. Or you can play it through, and you can get... There's so many different endings based off of who lives and who dies. Um, and it actually, it does matter. Like, the, the things that happen actually matter. I had a character die off because I made a mistake. Um, and I was... It, it not significantly impacted, but it, it impacted the game pretty hard in terms of, you know, the relationships between the characters and, and how it went forward and um so it i don't know they they just know what they're doing and so that's why i'm really excited for man of Medan. and i think it's interesting because i think uh their plan is to have these modes available in all of the dark picture anthology so i think this is really cool because it entices people who don't play games to be more involved yeah and kind of like i i, I would like to play this with my fiance she doesn't like horror related stuff so i don't think she will but, it's nice to know that know. the option is there, though, isn't it? Like that, that, that exactly. they're catering for that kind of shared experience, right? With those who ne- don't necessarily play games, or those that um, you know want to be involved with those that that play games, or maybe get an introduction into games. And their storytelling is very strong, I think, at least until Dawn was. Uh, so it it feels authentic instead of Telltale, where it's like. Okay, we're gonna string you along and tell you the story we want to tell you, and kind of, oh, you know, kind of give you the, the illusion. Kenny, Kenny wasn't happy, like, happy with that, <laughs> right? Oh my goodness! All right, spoiler, <laughs> spoiler. Yeah, put it in the description. On the flame. Oh my goodness! But yeah, like in Telltale games, it's like yeah, like say that at this person, they give you this item at this particular time or save you. 
if the butterfly effect would be like, all right, instead of it being this person that would give this item, it would be this other person. Right. Like, the story will still continue, like, continue on the same, like, like same track. Right. It would be a different person doing this instead of whatever, you know? Like, it's not really that much of a big thing. Like, I just feel like I don't have complete control of the actual story. I'm just playing their story, and it's, I just choose who gave me what, who did this at this time, and I just yeah. Like, Nothing really too big. Basically, right. my choice don't really matter, and that's right. why I kind of don't really play tell, tell games anymore. Right. You know, they're, they're shut down, but I was just like, wait, I was sold to believe that I can actually control the story of this game, and I actually don't. I just changed little bits here and there, but that's about it. Right, right. Yeah. So, uh, it'll be, I think it'll be very interesting when it comes out. We'll just, we'll kind of have to see, and you'll have to wait for the impressions. Something to keep an eye on. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, so uh, the Switch Lite is real and it is super confusing. Okay, so Nintendo announced the new system earlier this week and the system will, or depending on your view, not feature a solid body design, which means no Joy-Cons, uh, removal of the HD rumble, through motion sen- though motion sensors do remain, uh, the inability to connect to a television dock, a 5.5 inch 720p screen, a matte color design coming in bright yellow, gray, or turquoise. Uh, a Pokemon Special Edition has also been announced. Uh, the system will launch on September 20th for $200. And it has a true D-pad instead of the current Switch directional buttons. Uh, no kickstand will not work with most Lin- Nintendo Labo kits. So it truly is stripped down in the most kind of... Uh, extreme sense right. of the word uh, also in, t- in terms of the internals uh, the system will remain mostly the same it's got 32 gigabytes of internal storage uh, it's got a micro sd card slot for those of you that want to store all of your games that you've bought on the switch and it's got wi-fi nfc uh, and can connect to extra controllers especially since certain games will be unplayable on it. otherwise for example one two switch um, and then, as mentioned above, the system will not connect to a TV dock, which means that there won't be any kind of USB-C to HDMI pass through to kind of get that get that all connected. So it's truly, in every sense of the word, going to be a handheld system. Uh, the system will, will only be able to play games that work in handheld mode. And additional controllers will be needed to play specific games like Mario Party. Uh, you can transfer saves between devices and link accounts to that switch if you want to game share but you can only play the game on one Switch at a time, which means the uh, Switch that you have set as your, pri- like whichever one you set as your primary, obviously you can share with other accounts, but if your primary Switch is being used, you will not be able to play the uh, games on the Switch Lite, for example, which, is, which uh, depending on the situation, is going to be a bit hassle, a bit of a hassle. So um, I don't know what are you guys thoughts on the Nintendo Switch Lite. Well, you got one more thing. Uh, oh, yeah. Switch, Goodness. So. Yeah. 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 So uh, the Switch Pro. Is, that just wrong. Yeah. So the Switch Pro. That's actually a good point. The Switch Pro is not coming anytime this year. Uh, Nintendo CEO Doug Bowser confirmed that a new higher end version of the system will not be coming this year. Uh, however, Nintendo did file with the FCC to update parts within the current Switch model to get a newer processor and flash storage, which is always welcomed, right? Uh, so right. Switch Pro and uh, well potential Switch Pro obviously since it's not confirmed and the soon to come Switch Lite what are you guys' thoughts? The Switch Lite is a freaking train wreck like, it's just, like, <laughs> right in there right I'm in there sorry. for the juggler dude it, <laughs> yeah dude it, it is called a Switch you're removing the, the like you're basically removing the features that make it a Switch like it's called a Switch for a reason to be a hybrid console and then you completely remove the console part of it. Now you make it completely like for like uh, the only way this thing could actually be worth the money if they basically have it so you can play the 3ds games or and the 2ds games. So, like basically make it a 3ds and a switch, make it completely portable. Then I'll kind of make more sense right. of it, you know? Because dude, now you have a library of switch games. You cannot play the majority of them unless you buy more things for it. You cannot. I think you remove the Jarry feature as well. So now, like, no. games I have it, I is I going to update those games? I think they Ooh. kept it. Sorry. That's that's why I wanted to... I think it, we wrote it in there. The motion sensors are not in there, I think, still. But it doesn't... It's weird. I know it's, I know where you're going with it, but yeah, it's weird. You, I just wanted to let you know. I think they well, are they still... They gyro. It's motion sensor, but I don't think it's as well as the gyro. So I don't, I don't know. I'll take a look. Go ahead with your point, though, while you're, while you're yeah, on the roll. Because, like, a lot of games, you actually do need a gyro system and like games like i don't think Pokemon let's go like you don't really need it it was fine but it's kind of like oh you know press a and then t- toss the ball like i don't know i just feel like 
they remove a lot of a lot of features just to save you a hundred bucks. That doesn't really make sense. Like, yeah, you you lose uh, the fact that you can plug it to a TV. Uh, you lose the attachment with joint columns that could be literally like basically. I went to California. I brought a switch with me. I brought it to the airport because you know it's a switch. It's a portable console. Right. I was using it at the airport. I went to my sister's house, and you know me and my nephew wouldn't have like the switch only. We switched. The, you know, we took out the joint columns out. He had one. I had one. We were playing Smash Bros. We were playing. Um, this random any game. It was like a baseball any game. We were playing all these games just from the Switch alone, just with the Joy Cons, all this stuff, because it, it was amazing, right. you know? Now they have the portable Switch. And now I'll just be me and him taking turns again, you know? Like, we cannot. It's like, it went from being like a console where you can have multiple people playing at the same time to just being you by yourself, because um, it removed the, 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 the stand as well. Yeah. So you can't just have it sit down and like, me and him could at least be looking at the same Switch. And like play like no, you can't really do that unless we go make our makeshift stand. Right, right. Like, I just feel like they, like I like the core idea of the switch when it first came out, and it's completely stripped almost everything that was good from it, like everything, and just made like a portable version. And I think that's a really, really yeah, bad it's, idea. it's catering but, to a very, very, very niche group of the of the kind of uh, switch base. I think it's like, I mean, the current Nintendo Switch is a handheld system and it's a kind of you know home console system that you can kind of hook up to your tv like it's not like the current switch isn't handheld and now this is a handheld version of it you know that that's what makes it seem more absurd it's like normally when you release a handheld version of it like the playstation vita you know it's the you know right. it, it lets you play so obviously some games are like you know release on playstation and playstation vita especially when it was uh, during the ps3 kind of cycle but um but like uh it's you know you you it was in in a true sense of the word like a portable playstation system like it did things that you wouldn't have been able to do on your home playstation system whether that be a ps3 or ps4 you know that's it made it feel i mean obviously like uh, it's uh, not around anymore but it made it feel more worthwhile owning a ps vita at the time at least but with this switch system right. it's like hey we're making a handheld version of the switch when the current one is also handheld. What? Well, I know we talk about Nintendo, but the the the, the Vita, even though it flopped, the Vita I liked was it. Good. I liked it. Like it was good. Like it, it had a capability. I think the only problem it would have it was like the storage problem. But right. other than that, the Vita was good. Like the PSP was like probably like my, one of my favorite portable hand like handhelds I ever had, period. Like the PSP was amazing. Like I loved it. Like I had a PSP and a DS and I would take both from the school and then like the DS is good because I would play Mario Kart with my friends and he didn't have to have the Mario Kart game. I could just do like some thing where like I have the game and he could play it too with like a most player yeah. and stuff. Right. But the PSP like alone, like for the media, for the games, the graphics, it was amazing. The Vita, sorry, it didn't have the same pull for some reason. Maybe the car wasn't there at the time. Maybe, I don't know what happened to the Vita. It flopped. The variables weren't really you supporting it as much. But the Vita, it had the capabilities. Like it, it basically was a PSP. It, it was like, you know, like it's, it was a good, it was a good I, handheld. I it just failed. It just wasn't supported and nothing. <laughs> but uh, the Switch Lite, I'm just, I really don't, like, I, I see it if you only play portable, but the fact that if you only play handheld mode, but you're still losing features of the main Switch, like, as in, like, you can't play certain games, I don't really it see it. doesn't make like, too much sense. You know, the yeah, I mean, Switch. like, there's way more cards. Yeah, I mean, uh, let's just say, like, humor like a parallel universe where like the vita came out like around the same time that the switch came out maybe like a month or a few months later like could you imagine how much i mean it's, it's an interesting experiment to wonder right but could you imagine how much more mm -hmm. successful the vita would have been like they could have marketed remote play they could have marketed like all of these features that are, right. that were in the vita like in terms of the vita ps4 connection like they could have marketed all of these things and it maybe it would maybe it would have been a different situation now like I think, I think Nintendo was always more positioned for something like the what the Switch is or what the Switch Lite is kind of thing. Like they, they, they've as a company always been more positioned, I guess, or something like that. Like with PlayStation, obviously they made a PSP, which is a great handheld system. Uh, I th and like Kevin said, and like I think as well, P PS Vita was great. I did enjoy playing it a lot, and even now, like if I you know turn it on and I play a few games, and I still have a fun time, but. I think it was more the timing of it, I guess. Um, I know this is like kind of a side point. We're not really talking about the Switch here, but um, but yeah, it's just it's an interesting like connection, I guess. But um, 
What what about the Switch Pro? What do you guys what are you guys thoughts on the potential Switch Pro? Well, I just think it's gonna be uh well of course after the backlash of the light, I'm pretty sure they're gonna keep it, you know, how the switch is, it's probably just upgrade the graphics, make sure the games can probably run ten eighty p or maybe even four K. But I kinda doubt it because, you know, Sony me and Sony, wow. But <laughs> Nintendo doesn't really <laughs> Nintendo twist. doesn't really um care about graphics or <laughs> yeah, graphics like that. They really don't. They just, you know, they care about, you know, fun and enjoyment right. in a game and quality of game. So I know they're going to increase the specs at least so that it won't be like as um, yeah. pixelated as compared to other consoles, but not really pushing 4K. Yeah, I, mean, I don't see that. I don't see that either. Yeah. Right. I, two things. I, I didn't want to interrupt you guys on the Switch Lite. Just, I, I was looking up the information on it. Uh, I think the Switch Lite is for kids, to be fair. Yeah. I think this is more for kids, to be honest. Uh, but I, I, that was just the point that like we didn't hit, so I just wanted to hit that real quick. Um, but it was a Switch Pro. I think is necessary at this point because Switch is already kind of starting to show its, it's age plateau, in yeah. terms of like, yeah, processing. Mm. And for for people like us, it matters. For the average consumer, they're not gonna give a shit. Um, that, I'll put it this way: I was playing Bloodstained on my Switch, uh, the other night, and Crash my City. fiance, she's like. That it, I can't. Anyways, she looked at. She's like, this game. She's like, this game's really pretty. And I was like, really? Because the textures look like shit. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, so to the average person, they don't care about that. You know what yeah. I mean? Like to people that don't play games all the time, the Switch is fine the way it is. But for people like us, we're like, I forgot that the Switch handheld doesn't even run, and it runs in 720. I forgot it doesn't even run in 1080. Um. Uh, I think that's probably the mark they're going to want to hit is like, okay, we'll jack this thing up maybe to 400 bucks, but you'll get 1080p mobile resolution. Right. Uh, that would be my guess. And then I, I obviously the extra processing power and all that. Yeah. So. Maybe, who knows? I wonder, it, it's weird because Switch, you have to put it as a family. You know what I mean? Like the Switch Lite, the Switch and the Switch Pro all kind of have to exist in the same ecosystem, right? Because they all play the same games. Yeah. But they're not really the same system. Like the Switch Pro and the Switch would be very close to the same system, but not the Switch Lite. The Switch Lite is very clearly like its own thing. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's like a niche product. It's going to be for, like you said, kids. It's, I mean, it's very kids centric kind of thing. Something that doesn't really have a lot of moving parts to it. It's, it's a bit more kind of it's a bit more of a kind of robust system without any uh, any of the flourishes that the kind of current Switch has. And uh, I guess. I guess for when you look at it that way, fair enough. But for people like you know Kevin and you and me, you know we we want more. Like we need more power. So right. So then you know the the switch light. I I just I just felt like the only way. Like I think what they should have done with the light, they should have make it just just a mini version of the switch. It's like you know probably the same Joy Cons, um, this like the smaller screen. Don't come with the dock, but you could buy the dock separately. You right, know, just make it like two hundred bucks. Like basically, just keep it the same. You know, just just make it a little smaller. Make it like you know, it could maybe not the resolution. Uh, you know, keep it the same because we got seven twenty right. the max. So that's that's fine. Just just make it smaller. Just make it smaller and somehow save hundred bucks and don't include the dock. And then boom, two hundred dollars. That, that's right. That'll, that'll, that'll be it. I think we we discussed well. Chris and I discussed this before. Um, I think the issue with okay. making the switch light smaller. And retaining the Joy Cons is you would have to manufacture different sets of Joy Cons because they wouldn't fit the same way. You know yeah. what I mean? Like the Joy Con is designed specifically for the height of the Switch. Um, and I just had this weird like uh, feeling when I looked at the Switch Lite and I'm like, why does this look familiar? And I looked at it and I was like, you know what? This thing's basically just a Wii U tablet. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And I pulled one up and I look at it. And it's basically just a better version of the Wii U tablet. It's just like a nice looking version of the Wii U tablet. Yeah. Right. No, you got a point. But there. I mean, it's the Nintendo's the kind of DNA is is, is these devices. Maybe. Maybe that's our like guttural reaction. Maybe that's why everybody saw the Switch Lite and was like, "You." Yeah, it kind of <laughs> was because we're reminiscent of we have PTSD. For right, the Wii rewind U time and the, its tablet. <laughs> uh, but no, I. I I think you guys pretty much nailed the, you know, nailed all the points we could make on it, you know, with, with Switch Pro and Switch Lite. We're pretty much in a situation where we have to wait to see if Switch Pro exists 
And until then, you know, the Switch ecosystem is what it's going to be. Realistically, it's not affecting any of us at the end of the day. Like, you know, I I got to have a conversation with my fiance because we've talked for a long time about getting her a Switch. But I want to talk to her and be like, well, you know, do you want this? Would you rather have this or would you rather just have a Switch Switch? You know what I yeah. mean? Um, because I think you guys are right. I think Kevin hit really a, a good point. Realistically, if you remove the dock alone from the Switch, you could probably knock it down at 250. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah so I agree. I agree. Like, there's there's other ways that they could have positioned the current Switch and, and dropped the price on that. Like, you know, yeah, it's, 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 it's weird. I mean, we'll see how it does. Like, if it if it hits its niche market and it does well, then fantastic. But, you know, we'll see, like, mm-hmm. we, we, people have been rubbed kind of, well, I'd say, like, a lot of gamers like us have been rubbed the wrong way slightly right. by it. So we'll see how it turns out, I guess. I'll say one last thing before, and then I'll let Kevin take the, the next story. I, f- what would really make this thing a lot better is if you could use it like the 3DS could be used in like Smash Bros and use it as a controller for the Switch or like, you know what I mean? Like utilize it the way you, the Wii U tablet actually was used on with other games on a normal Switch. Like if you wanted to play Mario Kart together with somebody, you know what I mean? At home or, or something like that. Yeah. Locally, I think that would be good. I don't think they've said anything about something like that. So I doubt that's going to, well, no, you could do local play. Yeah, lo- lo- Never local, mind. local play is possible. Yeah, you yeah. could so do local be like, you play. Could, someone could be on their on their like docked switch, and then someone could be on the switch light and do a local play kind of setup situation. Right, which is sweet, I guess. I mean, it's yeah. like you know, you don't you can have you, so you, you could look at your it. screen while the person's looking at the TV. Like you know, you're not. It, I suppose it, it has its uses, I guess. Yeah, well, just I kind of think it's one of those wait and see things. I think right now we're in a situation where it's not great, but you know, it, maybe we're wrong. Maybe we're wrong. No, that is not marketing towards us as well. Yeah, so it's not meant for us, honestly. So I, we need to also consider that. The only reason I would buy one is to look at it and be like, wow, that thing's really cool. I'm never going to play it, but it looks cool. Like, right. <laughs> that would be about it. Awesome. So the, <laughs> the special editions, I'm sure, will be nice. Anyways, let's let Kevin go on to the next story. All right. So Gears War 5 will not feature... <gasps> Something apparently a long time in the making, the franchise will no longer feature smoking in the game. <sighs> I think it was because of that show. What that show you keep watching? <laughs> oh, anyway. yeah. Yeah, there was that. <laughs> Anti-smoking nonprofit, The Truth Initiative, approached Turner, the esports league who has been, I'm sorry, who has broadcasting rights to Gears of War to make the changes. Turner went to the coalition to discuss these changes and they agreed to remove smoking entirely. Studio head Rob Ferguson spoke out regarding the issue and stated that it was important for me to not use smoking as a narrative device. Ferguson clarified that it would no longer feature in the Gears franchise going forward and the decision was entirely made by the coalition. Microsoft is moving old accounts. Great. Who needs these freaking stock accounts from like 80 years ago? The company announced that it is going to start on August 30th, removing Microsoft only and Xbox Live accounts that have been inactive for longer than two years. The company updated their activity policy to reflect these items. You can retain your account as active as long as you log in at least once within a two-year like, um, time span. The company will not close down accounts if the following factors apply. The account has any bans, even a <laughs> penny. Accounts... <laughs> as long as you have right. money in that account. <laughs> like, account waiting for a refund. Main accounts that have active sub-accounts. Account with Microsoft certification linked with Remain actively uh, indefinitely. No, Sony is not finally ending the video of Miserable Life. Oh, that's, a, that's your tool. Cut, cut, <laughs> cut. It's cool. Cut. I was going to let you go. I was just going to let you go through the Microsoft uh, one. I was like, well, he's going to read my story, but that's fine. They're, they're grouped together. Yeah. Whatever, that's fine. All right. We can discuss, no, okay. we can discuss all the Microsoft stuff. Yeah, because that, 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 that makes sense, actually, because like, the Gears stuff and Microsoft stuff is all kind of one right. nice little connection. Yeah, that's why I like. I'll kind of like whatever. And people keep messaging me, so my eyes kind of derailed. So I'm like, yeah. all right, next. <laughs> Oh shoot! No, I stopped. You're, you're fine. You're fine. So, uh, we discussed this a little bit before the show. As far as I'm aware, when it comes to smoking cigarettes and tobacco, um, I used to be a smoker. So, like this kind of stuff doesn't, you know, it it does. I think contribute to some people being like, "Oh, smoking is cool. I want to do that." You know what I mean? But um, it, it's it's a very subconscious cultural thing in America where like we don't 
I don't know if we see smoking as cool anymore. You don't glorify like, it as we, much, right? No. I mean, we, we have characters and things like, like Kevin mentioned Stranger Things that were, or you guys mentioned Stranger Things earlier where they, they smoke, but it's not used as a device that, uh, I understand what he means as a narrative device, you know, sometimes like, uh, you know, you'll have a character setting up a scene or whatever they're, you know, they're looking pretty badass and they're like, look it over a canyon or some shit and they're like yeah token yeah fucking piece of <laughs> shit yeah like like i could see where they're coming from with that um i don't have an issue generally with there being smoking in video games i just i don't but i understand that like i understand what they mean in terms of utilizing it in a way that glorifies it that's fine if that's if that's really what you want to do it's not gonna make the game any worse you know, and the thing about Stranger Things, they're set in a time where A Roll was smoking, right? Even in the hospital, a doctor was smoking, right? Like, kids were smoking at yeah. the age of 10. So, like, people were having all this backlash about it, but you gotta look at the setting of the show, but yeah. I understand what Microsoft is doing, like, there's not really much benefits to smoking and not trying to be in all your, you know, life and pillar life and tell you what to do, not to do, but they're trying not to promote smoking. And I don't see a problem with them just removing smoking. Like, it's not a big deal. It's not going to have anything to do with the story itself, you know? Right. And then you have a character, like, in Gears of War who's, like, he's, like, he's cool and all this stuff. And his main, like, his main characteristic is that he smokes. And they'll try to remove that from the character from on on. Okay, then maybe. But, like, you know how, like, in Naruto, there's a character named Austin Butler yeah. who smokes. <laughs> and, like, like we know him as a smoker. Like, yeah, that's his character, so it's fine. You know, like he's not really promoting it. It's just, that's how he is. That's that's him. Right. We, we see Osimo, you think of a cigarette in his mouth. Like that's it. You know. <laughs> but Gears of War doesn't really have that type of characteristics in their characters at all. They just have bulky characters. Actually, they kind of slim down. If you look at the Gears of War like four and five, right? They're not as bulky. Yeah, as my goodness, they're like three. some you know roided out rugby like football players or something. Yeah, they look yeah, massive but, in the older games. Yeah. But yeah, now they they're more modernized. So like, look, they're still bulky, but not. It's not as, as crazy. It's a bit more. It's a bit more kind of close to reality. I mean, like if right. that's ever a phrase to yeah. apply to gears, but, um, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's like the the whole thing is like I I completely agree with what Kevin said. Like, and and I said I even I think Mike, as you'll remember, I said this in the tweet as well. Um, you know, if in the off chance, in the off chance, not assuming that there will be an impact. But in the off chance that there is an impact and it does encourage people to not want to smoke, just I'm just being devil's advocate here and right. just putting this out there. Is that really a bad thing? You know what I'm saying? It's like people saying, no. oh, you know, we don't want to give, the, get, you know, we don't want to uh, affect like impressionable youth because we don't want them to, you know, glorify the idea of smoking. It's like, okay, fair enough. Whether that's genuine or not genuine, if youth will look at it and think, oh, no smoking, that means I'm not going to smoke. I'm just being devil's advocate here. Do you, is right. that really a bad thing? I don't think that's a bad thing at all. If that comes out of this, then we should welcome that. We shouldn't be like, oh my God. I mean, people, a lot of people are getting angry at the whole idea that, you know, Microsoft slash the coalition is kind of bending to the whim of uh, sponsors and stuff, which is fair enough, right? And and it is a business at the end of the day. Like if you want to, you know, have a right. solid, that's exactly, well, you want to have a solid partnership, you have to, you know, do certain things a certain way. Like if you're promoting, if you're promoting Pepsi, you can't be seen on the ins- on the gram or on Twitter or anything drinking Coca Cola. You know what I'm saying? It's like right. one of those kind of things. Like if if a certain action or activity doesn't go with a certain sponsor, they're going to say, "Sorry, like we're not going to sponsor you if you keep that going." So you have to make certain decisions. But a byproduct of that decision could potentially be something good. So I think that should outweigh the kind of outrage. But we live in an outrage culture anyway. So right. It doesn't matter. The thing about gears, like, um, I'm, I agree with what you're saying, but at the same time, I don't really even remember or even recall one time I seen a character actually smoke in gears, and I played almost all the gears. Like, I even played Judgment, so I basically played all the gears. Right. I cannot really recall that you <laughs> smoking, so I, I don't know why this even news to be honest. Like, I don't yeah. mind like this articles about it on a stuff. Like, I don't like no, yeah. it's not even like a slight <laughs> memory of i seen anybody smoking gears I, I really think those are trying to do it for like i guess like dude people are just you know, thirsting some, to some be traction. outraged like thirsty to be outraged they, really like, they want They're something just, to just argue about like people just wait right. for you to say you know oh we're, we're removing this feature from the game and then suddenly like just create a big argument about it and it's just like what 
Why are you censoring yeah. my right. name? <laughs> Why are you censoring yeah. it? <laughs> yeah, so it's basically, in my opinion, and I guess our opinion as well, it is traction. It is just trying to get people to, like, discuss more about Gears, you know? Like, Gears, even though it's a popular Xbox game, you know, it's still kind of fell in the rug, at least in the radar of, like, popular games now. So I guess this is, like, a way to promote Gears in a way, you know? Well, yeah. I'll press, not, I'll press is good press. And so some people, Very you know? Um, yeah. I don't know, Billy, how much you know about the Truth Initiative, but they're very aggressive in their marketing campaigns, um, yeah. which is fine, whatever. And like I, I think I said at the, the top, I'm the, as far as I'm aware among us here, I'm the only one who's a, a, a ex-tobacco smoker. I used to smoke cigarettes for uh, probably a good six years, so I smoked for a while. Um, and that kind of stuff, it really it, it does kind of get in your mind uh, as somebody who has dealt with, you know, with that yeah. addiction where you like you see it and you're like man the cigarette sounds good yeah <laughs> like, you know like it really does kind of uh i hate to use the term but it really does activate or trigger that that sort of impulse that reaction you, where, like, man I, rem- I remember smoking cigarettes i remember what that felt like i remember liking cigarettes like it, it does kind of kind of pull at that yeah um, but i don't really have an issue with it like even in movies I'll see it and sometimes I'll be like, man, that looks good. But that's about it. Like, that's as far as it goes for me. But I could understand why it would be that way. We discussed uh, previously in America, there's a lot of, I think this also is a precautionary thing. Yeah. I think it'll probably be at a point where they're not going to allow you to show people smoking anymore. Um, I think that's probably just going to be a thing that happens. Yeah. Uh, you don't see tobacco ads anymore. They don't exist, I don't think, in America. I don't think they're, allow- they're allowed yeah, to. Yeah, and you have the warnings and on then, the packaging as well, don't you, out there? Right, right. We don't have the ones like you guys have with the the images. Oh, yeah. uh, we just have the Surgeon General's warning. Um, but you're not allowed to drink on TV or in ads. Uh, you're allowed to drink, but it's not allowed to promote. You know, if it's an ad or a sponsored thing, you're not allowed to drink. Huh? Yeah, and you just in, can't in glorify it. You can't glorify the ad because right. these things that that they're, they're put. I mean, with all due respect to people that are you know smokers or drinkers, you know that they, they are right. they aren't good for your body in the long term or even short term for some people mm-hmm. so sure it's not even good for people around you too because it's exactly like smoke, huh? right exactly especially if you have kids and stuff like that so it's a you know it is its own thing and i don't i don't really have an issue with it it's totally different than a lot of other things i haven't even seen the arguments against it but i can't imagine they're i will i will, this, I will say this i will say this though um like folks need to stop kind of Saying, "Oh, it's a game where you can literally blow someone's head off with a shotgun, and they're and they're taking out smoking." It's like that. This it's a false yeah. equivalence, right there. Like they're not the same. They're not right. the same issue. It's like ain't nobody like with the same kind of normal balanced mind going out in the street thinking, you know what? I want to take a nasher to this guy's throat. You know what I'm saying? Like ain't nobody right. saying that. You yeah. know, like. I'm gonna curse on my boss. Right. No, you don't think. Well, you probably <laughs> think that, but you don't <laughs> actually do it. Yeah, you know. So, I, I agree with. I, I, we discussed this previously. I think the only reason that argument ever really came up is because they they initially instead of just having the the brass, I guess, to stand behind their decision, just be like, "Look, we don't want to do it. We don't want to do it. We haven't wanted to do it. This is just a good reason for us not to do it anymore." Uh, they kind of hid yeah. behind the it's for the kids kind yeah. of thing. And I think that's why it cropped up. They should have just been like, no, we've wanted to do this for a long time. And, you know, this is finally a good reason for us to just enact it and execute it. So I, I think that they're kind of trying to, to sidestep yeah. it and, and try to be like, no. They should have been more transparent you know? on the whole reasoning behind right. it rather than just saying it's for the kids and then all this other news coming out. Man. Right. They should not even announce it. This it's no, a non-issue. It's a non-issue. Game, people smoke. It. People don't smoke. Right. What the hell? <laughs> there was no reason yeah. for them to even really discuss it. Honestly, and, like you would have seen an article about it after the game came out, maybe. But I doubt anyone even would have noticed. Like Kevin said, I can't recall a single moment where there was somebody smoking in Gears. Right. And I've played one, two, three, and four. So. And Dolphy, you played Judgment? No, I didn't play Judgment. Oh, uh, well, as a hater, I love it, but I actually did like it. I actually like how, like, oh, well, I'm derailing from, like, the actual <laughs> topic in a way. That's all right. Like, in Judgment, there's, like, there's, like, the, the classified missions. So, like, you could continue on the story, like, linear, or you actually hit, like, on the random wall or something, and it actually change the, what happens in that moment. Like, you see more enemies, or you have to do this little sword mission oh, okay. while continuing the story. Yeah, that's actually pretty that's cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 
Anyways, uh, real quick, Kevin read through both of the Microsoft stories, so I guess we'll real quick hit on the the account removing. Do you guys have any real thoughts or concerns about this? Because I, as soon as I saw this, I was just like, oh, I mean that makes sense. They've been talking about, uh, you know, letting up. What was the thing with the gamer tags they did? Something where you could you could get old gamer tags or whatever. Yeah. Remember they they removed a bunch or put them back into circulation or something. So like this seems to be in line with that. They're just trying to clear house and be like, we have too much shit. Like, yeah, yeah. It needs to be more guys. Yeah. I I just feel like if you're uh, if you have an account that you know they've been inactive for two years, I think about people switch consoles and all that stuff. Like say that right now, if you're on Xbox or I'm sorry, last year most people was on Xbox uh-huh. and then not a lot of people switch to PS4 and then like all right, the Xbox, the whatever you call it, two or whatever. It's great. I'm gonna go back to Xbox, and then you try to log into your account. You can't you have access to your account. That's a problem, you know. Yeah. I already think right. that if at least you should be able to log into the email, and it be like, hey, your password, I think your account is suspended, and you know you need to create a new account, and that's it. I would assume that they will send you a notification, be like, hey, just so you know, if you don't log in, we're gonna delete your account. I doubt they're just gonna delete it straight up without giving you something. They'll give you a warning for sure. About it. Email. But think about it, like that's that's sucky because like. Right now, like, say that right now, I'm mostly on heavy on Xbox. I'm not really on my PlayStation much. And my PlayStation email is set to an email I don't really use. So I'm not going to get that notification. I guess. Um, it, it, I'm trying to think, because, like, I think to the people this actually matters to, the people that, because realistically, I think we, uh, there's a couple things in here that we, we already mentioned that they'll not close your account for. Um, so, like, uh, you can just you can go buy a gift card if you really wanted to a five dollar gift card load it on your account and never have to worry about it ever again realistically but that's like i have to put money in yeah to save my right account. i, I is, agree you crazy. shouldn't have to do that but at the same point like if you know if you were like okay i'm gonna i mean you could log in on the site i think you could just log in on the site and that'll authenticate it I could you that imagine works. that though it's like and, yo let me a dollar fam i need to keep my xbox account for closing down <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or this effect that uh, I don't like. Yeah, we would do that because we're actual gamers. But right. like a typical person who's like, "All right, I'm gonna go to the next best thing," and they go from console like, "I'm gonna be a PlayStation guy this generation, an Xbox guy this generation." Right. That gonna really be like, okay, let me go on my Xbox email right quick and make sure you don't close my account. They probably even know about the news period, you know? Like, right. so I really think like they should really just, you know, just remove your account. Like, basically, like. People can't really look you up and all that stuff. But when you actually try logging back in your account, you'd be like, hey, um, house closed. Uh, if you want access to it, you know, create a new gamer tag. And that's it. You know, just boom. And then you keep your gamer, you keep your gamer score and all that stuff. And then boom, because I'll be really pissed off. Yeah. If, like, if I lose like 100,000, like, right now I'm at 70,000, but 100,000 gamer score all because I switched from Xbox 360 to PS4. And then I'm going back to the next Xbox because you know what? I like the, the new Scarlet, I think right. it's amazing. I'm gonna go back to Xbox. Oh shoot, my 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 account is gone. My game is everything. everything is gone from freaking regular right. from OG Xbox. I would be extremely upset if I was that that person. So that's one hundred percent a solid point. I think uh, what they they that you have to put in there too is the emphasis on backwards compatibility. You also will lose access to all that. I don't think. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you'll lose access to all the licenses you purchased. Yeah. So like, like all the games that, that you bought, all the all the content, all the DLC, right. like all the Maybe. hours spent. <laughs> I this sounds like a Microsoft move. It doesn't sound like an Xbox move. You know I what think I mean? Because so. they're also deleting Microsoft accounts, just, not just Xbox yeah, yeah, accounts. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I think it's more for that. But yeah, it. it you know, it does make an issue and it's like, you know, you're right. You shouldn't have to put money onto an account to, to keep your account. But like if it, as shitty as it is, I think that's probably like the best way to do it. If you know, hey, next gen, I'm going to hop from Xbox one to PS5 or something, you know, like that's what you want to do. Right. You're like, OK, well, before I do that, I'll load up five bucks on my Xbox account and I don't have to worry about it. But it's still stupid. That like, you have to still, do you that. You shouldn't yeah. have to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you still shouldn't have to do that. I agree one hundred percent. But I think that's probably the only way, really, to like do it, unless you try to get Microsoft certifications, which I don't really know how you do. Um, so, so I think that's for developers and stuff like that. But I, I don't know. This is a weird plan. I think they might. I don't know. They maybe they'll they'll. Um, 
adjust it. There has to be some type of workaround. Yeah, they yeah. have to do something. I have to look at the poll. We we'll have uh, we have the article in the description. Um, so if you're interested, you can look at that and look at the act- actual policy, uh, that Microsoft's updated. So it might be something in there where the original article I pulled this from just didn't have that information. So right. But uh, look, like, I have a lot of friends right now that. Is inactive on Xbox that they went to PS4. Yeah, dude. And I still have them as a friend on Xbox. I have a bunch of square profile pictures <laughs> on my Xbox yeah. Slides list. So, like, I'm just waiting for them to come back, all this stuff. Right. You know, even, like, I do have a PS4. I'm just, I, I don't reinvest, like, as far as games in my PS4. I am almost everything on Xbox. So it's like, I don't really play as much. You know, if anything, my PS4 be at my friend's house and stuff because I know they, most likely want a game to play, and I was like, here, you know, like I have it sitting here. Right. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not getting that's just where you play. Yeah, it's you just, play yeah, on Xbox. I just it's exactly, fine. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it's like, uh, and then like those those guys, a nice uh, incentive for them to come back to Xbox would be like, hey, at least I have all my old stuff. Especially if them having back compatibility, all this stuff. Right. At least I had those waiting for me, and then boom, my account is gone. I had lost all my games that I purchased too, and my gaming score like. You know, I I didn't mention gamers because though that actually makes or break people as well. Like gamers actually matters to some people. It used to matter to me before, but not this generation because I work a lot and I can't really care about that. But right. games, are, it actually did matter to a lot of people. So like, if I lose that and I lose like my games, I'll be pissed off. I would never. I'll just go continue playing on PlayStation. Right. Yeah, I I don't blame you on that at all. Um, Billy, do you have anything else you want to say before we? we yeah, I'm, 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 I'm indifferent to it. To be honest, like, uh, it's not, it's not gonna. I mean, I shouldn't be like, oh, it's not gonna affect me. Therefore, it's not a problem. But, um, it's just one of those things, I guess. Uh, you know, you know, you just, it shouldn't be this way. But you know, from the company's perspective, they're doing it. Let's roll with it. If it becomes a big problem, then they're gonna have to reevaluate it. I guess. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, it's not affecting us really. Well, it might affect our friends, but not affecting yeah. us at least. So it shouldn't really matter. But that's Microsoft decision. They have to deal with it at the end of the day. Um, so we just gonna continue on. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. so uh, Sony, <laughs> Sony is not finally ending the Vita's miserable life. Uh, so a website called jackofallcontrollers.com, uh, interesting name, uh, published a story early early this week. Quoting a Kickstarter developer, Suzaku, stating that their game, in quotes, might be the last game ever released on Vita. Uh, The story went on about how the developer stated that, in quotes, we may be cutting it close, but we still, according to what we have access to on our dev publisher dashboard with Sony, are going to make the cutoff. Uh, Continue on to say, the story has, at the time of writing the script at 8.51 p.m., uh, Saturday, July 13th, being updated three separate times. So the three updates. The first update came from publisher uh, Rat- Rataleka Games, saying that they have not seen anything in terms of a cutoff date. The second update came from Cowcat Games, stating that they have not seen anything on their end and it must be a miscommunication from Suzaku or a mistake. And the final update was from East Asia Soft and Limited Run Games, confirming they are unaware of anything regarding the closing- closure of publishing on Vita's storefront. So interesting, interesting stuff there, boys. What do you guys think? Um, the Vita, uh, you know, like it, it, it died. <laughs> like, yeah, it, it died. But I feel like it wasn't really Sony's fault. Like Sony actually released a great handheld. Like it was bad before, timing in the market, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, I think well, I think it came out for the PS3. Yeah, era, yeah. right. Yeah, so, it was. It was. I think a year. Before PS4, I think it came out in 2012. Yeah, so I think if they actually delayed, actually delayed it to like the P, uh, with the PS4 coming out, and just have it like how like the the Wii U is like have it like hey you know I could do remote play on this you know I could play my PS4 games on the Vita as well mm-hmm. and I could have its own library of games and it'd been like a perfect time perfect market but right now you know at the time it was coming out. You know, people are looking for the PS4. They don't really look for the uh, PS Vita. Even though right. it's a market, it's still under the same brand. And the Vita just came out, and it was, like, completely under the radar. It was expensive, and too, wasn't it? It was, like, 250 or 300 Yeah, at the time. And especially when, like, at the time, 
the DS and well, I don't know if it was the DS3S because like you know, I'm fuzzy, especially when it comes to DS and 3DS. So whatever the Nintendo handheld was at the time was dominant market. So is like, why would you release this at the end of like Nintendo dominates market and when your next console is coming out the yeah. following year? I mean, uh, so. like, as as very very good points. I mean, the the Vita I think the thing that killed it the most was the timing. Um, you know, it just it could have been positioned so much better. Um, the shame, I guess, is that you know, uh, sh- shareholders, stockholders for Sony. Um, they're not really going to be instilled with massive confidence if Sony says, hey, we're going to make a handheld console because the most recent one that they've done is the Vita. And, um, you know, we we will see now that kind of went out. So it's like we want to ha- we want to have a, a solid, uh, uh, we want to have a new kind of solid, even if it, even if it was a, uh, a revision of the Vita or even a whole new kind of handheld PlayStation system. Um, like I would have loved to have seen one, but you know, it probably won't happen anytime soon. It'll probably take a while for Sony to kind of, or PlayStation to position themselves to kind of uh, getting something like that out of the gate. So um, I think it's annoying because a lot of people are going to say, no, you know, PlayStation is the home console. Like some people might say, oh, it's just, you should just, they should just stick to the home consoles and this and the other. And that's fair enough. But I, I would love a kind of a Sony a new Sony handheld system. I don't know about you guys. What are you guys' thoughts on that? Oh, well, now, like, while you were talking, I was thinking that, you know, the place, like, Sony, they haven't really released, like, officially or announced the PS5. Like, they kind of did talk about it, like, the features and all the stuff, but they haven't, really, like, have, like, a, like, a conference, like, hey, here's the PS5, you know, and stuff. So, I'm really thinking that they might actually learn from the beta launch and actually be like, hey, here's a new PlayStation Portable, um, platform you know handheld at the yeah. same time i think that's what we're probably, probably doing because it kind of makes sense now how they kind of like you know announce it that okay the, the, we're not going to do any more things with the beta all this stuff and then you already know the ps5 is going to come out next year well i think we're assuming at least it'll come out next year so i just think that right now is like a perfect opportunity for them to be like all right i think maybe i think when does places have the little show like uh, their own december. little conference if they do december. It. they didn't do one last year so so I make maybe they might just wait till December and be like, "Hey, here's a PS5. It's have this much specs. It's amazing. But wait, there's more. Mm-hmm. Meaning that Vita that died that we say that we we'll start supporting, we we'll start supporting it because we learn from our mistakes. And here's the I'm not gonna call it Vita too because you know whatever. But here's our PlayStation Portable, and right. then boom, because the PSP was amazing. Like yeah. I mentioned before, like it was. My favorite handheld, I guess I was gonna say console. My favorite handheld platform. It was freaking amazing. I love the PSP. Like it was the best thing I ever had. Like as a handheld, the DS as well. I, I love both of them together. Like, I love both of them. Like the right. DS and the PSP was amazing. The 3DS, I kind of fell off because that's when I started becoming a manager all this stuff. So I haven't really time to really love the 3DS. But the DS, with games like The War Ends with You. And all these games, like they have great quality games, while the PSP had great, you know, actual like resolution and like those type of quality games. Like PSP, uh, the DS had like you know like down the fun games, and the PSP had like nice looking games, and it was also kind of fun as well. And I also had like the other things like I could listen to music, I could do this, I could you know I could browse the internet and all that stuff. And at the time, I didn't really have that much like a console to really go on the internet or even a PC. So it was, like I basically always using my PSP for my yeah. everything. Right. Yeah, I, I was in high school. At I time. remember those. Yeah, I remember that time frame where the, the the PSP was you know this this massive thing that everybody had. Um, I I agree that they if they do it they should do it after PS5, yeah. but I I I disagree that they should launch it simultaneously because of how expensive PS5 is probably going to end up being. Uh, only because we saw that PSVR's strategy worked out pretty well. PS4 came out. And then what PSVR came out in what twenty sixteen? Yeah, I think it wasn't it was seventeen. Yeah, they they, not, they did the they did the PS4 Pro and then they did the PSVR after that, didn't they? It was like a kind of it right. was kind of like, you know, the they the, pretty the much... ultimate, you know, experience of VR will probably be on the on the pro. Like that's that was the impression that right. I remember getting from the whole kind of sequence of events. Right. That was pretty much the premise. So they, they it's kinda intertwine those things more together and I think they you'd be more likely or more inclined. I well, I would be more inclined as a consumer to buy it if it came out, you know, like two years later. You know, 
And it's like, okay, this thing, the whole thing is a, this thing's going to go head to head with whatever switch probably at that time. But, you know, we're talking 2022 at this point. So, <laughs> hey, what if Sony actually make it like a hybrid console as well? That's what people have been saying. They're like, what if they do they do a hybrid console? And I'm like, well, I think the only way they would do a hybrid console, in quotes, is if they just took the core prime. Like, I've discussed this before, but PS Vita was very actually similar to the idea that Switch was. Because originally you used to be able to plug in your Vita to the PS3. And I think you could play games off of it that way. Yeah, yeah. I could be wrong yeah. on that. Um, but then they also had the PS TV, which was entirely meant for you to be able to play Vita games on your TV. That was the entire premise. Yeah. So it, they had already kind of had that idea um, before really the you know Nintendo had come with the Switch. And so I think if you got a compatible version, it would just be okay. It would be very similar to PS4 and Vita's relationship now where it's like cross buy and stuff like that. And it's like, okay, some of these games will work on your new handheld. Some of them will be exclusive, but you'll be able to play everything on the PS5. You'll be able to connect it to the PS5 and play everything on your TV if you want to. Right. That would be my assumption of how they went about doing right. it. Right. Um, Something just came to mind now, though, and this is a bit of a crazy idea, but hear me out on this one, guys. Like, you know, the whole sure. partnership or like the cloud, cloud platform partnership between Microsoft and Sony. I'm wondering now, sure. it just came into my mind. What if uh, if if Sony or PlayStation decide to make a handheld system? What if that's got something to do with the cloud or the cloud partnership kind of involved in that? In a sense that you know how because um, Xbox is pretty much kind of open platform, or Xbox Live, sorry, uh, enabling the kind of streaming to your phone, streaming to this, streaming to this, that, and the other, right? All these different right. platforms. What if because Sony like to go the kind of proprietary way in terms of we want to keep it on our devices? Um, what if it's like, you know, you can stream your games through an xCloud-esque service, you know, thanks to the partnership with Microsoft, uh, to the portable system, whatever it's called, whether it's a PlayStation portable and this and the other. Like, that's one way that I suppose it could happen as well. Like, uh, they can kind of... Because right, right now, there's a lot of speculation. That what What is the kind of cloud partnership you know how is that going to come to fruition how is it going to actually kind of manifest itself for the companies you know like right. where is it actually going to work is it you know xbox stuff coming to playstation is the place you know people are coming up with all kinds of things but but it would make sense to me now that i think of it if it was like yeah we're going to make a handheld system but instead of doing like the remote play system that they had before let's you know really take advantage of this partnership that we just you know put a lot of finances into and, and and kind of push down that way so you know it's something to humor i guess isn't it yeah i think i think what i i'm getting from what you're suggesting is something like how the switch operates in japan where you can stream certain games yeah. and you can play other games locally on the hardware i i think that would probably be where sony pushes it if they did do it now if hypothetically you could get PlayStation Now working on that. Yeah. That would be a huge, huge fucking bonus. So there's a lot of cool things they could do. We could speculate it on all, all, all day, you know. Oh, but yeah. the big reason I, I pulled this story was not just because of, excuse me, the Vita, um, you know, uh, its potential death. We know that's coming. <laughs> it's it's already, you know, the writing's already been on you the wall. You sounded so no emotional production. when you said that. It's, uh, it's just I had a Vita. <laughs> I had a Vita and I liked it, but I stopped playing it, and so I ended up getting you know getting rid of it, um, so I could focus more heavily on on buying stuff for Switch. And, yeah, and, yeah, uh, I Xbox. can understand that. So, but, but um, I, the reason I wrote this was really because I, I don't like to. I I guess the way to put it out is that like this is kind of shoddy journalism, and that's why I put it in there in the first place. Uh, they this this site didn't collaborate anything you know what i mean yeah. like they didn't they didn't try to find sources they didn't try to confirm with the developer they just wrote the article based off of some stuff they saw online yeah it's like when you see an article based off of a reddit post yeah yeah you're like eh. yeah what's your source yeah. it's like yeah <laughs> what's your source oh some random <laughs> anonymous random reddit dudes <laughs> on yeah. reddit yeah like come on man like so I, I like to throw those in here every now and again, though I thought it would also spark the discussion that we had here. So that's why Absolutely. I to put it in here. But uh, 
Yeah, I could do a whole thing. We could do a whole thing on the PlayStation ecosystem, and we might one day. Yeah. But I, I think that will do it for now. Uh, I forgot to write the outro, so I guess I will do the outro. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us. We are the Ambassadors of Gaming. I'm Ambassador Michael. And I'm Ambassador Billy. And I am Haitian Kevin. I'm mean, Ambassador Kevin. <laughs> and I'm the Prince and of Persia. we will see you. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're global. Hey, when we think about it, we are really like a diverse group of people. When you we think are. About it. We've got Hispanic people. We have, you know, Caucasians. We have Brazilians. <laughs> we have people. Whatever Billy is. I like to stay ambiguous. We've got Haitians. Like, oh, my God. All right. <laughs> All right, y'all. So we're going to get out of here. Thank you for joining us. And until next time, uh, thank you for joining us. Goodbye. Peace.